Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Sleep Detective podcast. I am here with my colleague and friend, Julie Lamb. We met in in a business mastermind together, and so we have been friends for a few years now. She is a licensed clinical social worker and a life coach for executives and entrepreneurs, and she specializes in burnout. So that is what we are going to talk about today. Welcome, Julie. Thank you, Martha. I'm so excited to be here today. Yay, me too. Because I talk a lot about stress on on my podcast, and so that can be mental stress and physiological stress, but I haven't talked about burnout, so I'm really excited to talk to you and and talk about, first of all, what is burnout? Yeah, you know, it's it's so interesting because it's, I'm going to call it the buzzword. Everybody's like, I'm burnout, or what is burnout, or, you know, I felt this way. And really burnout is just that physical, mental, emotional exhaustion. It's essentially when stress becomes more than just stress. It's the overwhelm of it all. That's the best way to kind of describe it. Yeah, totally. And yeah, I'm like, yep, I felt that way before (laughs) there's stress. And then, yeah. And then it can lead to burnout if you don't do anything about it. Yes. So, but I think some people might think that their burnout is just stress, for example, like it's just normal. So I'm curious what burnout actually looks like. That's a really great question because you're right. A lot of times we just think I'm stressed. And if I'm stressed, then um, I can, I can just deal with the stress, but what burnout really looks like is when you are so chronically stressed that the idea of getting up in the morning is overwhelming. And the idea of actually doing anything is, is just too much to handle in that moment. It also shows up in like isolating from others, just not wanting to be around others. And what's interesting is that burnout will look a lot like depression or anxiety. And so that's why it often goes undetected because I'm going to speak to my high achieving people. You kind of look at it and you're just like, I can, I'll just push through. I'll just keep going. I'll just, you know. And at the end of the day, you're so exhausted and you just think, well, I'll just wait till the weekend and I'll just, uh, uh, the weekend will be better. And you don't want to actually say, well, maybe I'm struggling with burnout because then that brings up, well, it's depression, it's anxiety, it's something else. And when it is chronic over and over and over again, where the idea of just, you can't imagine going to work anymore, the hustle, you can't imagine like going to sleep is impossible or even just doing your work. You're just not in excited about anything anymore. That's when we've reached that burnout stage. Yeah. Which does sound a lot like depression, like you're saying. So how do Mm -hmm. you tell the difference? Yeah. So it kind of looks like what we're going to call is high achieving depression or functioning depression, because how many of us, let's be honest here. This was, I'm going to describe me a little bit here in my kind of burnout was it was after I had a baby and I am a new mom and I'm trying to, you know, babies don't sleep. (laughs) Why not? No, it's like, I was just exhausted. I was tired and I was back at my therapy job and I was listening to somebody talk about like a real, real struggle they were having. And all I could think about is just grow up. Just like, what is your problem here? Like, this is not like, this is not a big deal. And it was in that moment that I realized that I had no empathy for anything anybody was going through. I had no, um, compassion. Whereas Mm -hmm. when I look at depression, depression is essentially where I, I just even can't imagine, like, it's almost like I get in the pool with them. I'm like, oh yeah, that does sound awful. That does feel so terrible. That is so overwhelming. And so that's how I look at the difference between burnout and depression is the burnout is, I just, I just don't care. You all can go away. And depression is just like, why doesn't anybody love me? Like what's going on here in the simplest of terms. That's kind of the way I look at what the difference really is. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I think. I mean, burnout again, has that stress component too, right? Of like, just as being over, overly constantly stressed. So absolutely. Yeah. I kind of look at it. It's like we as high achievers or people that like control or perfectionists, that's really who looks at this. And yes, they say that those in the medical field and those in the helping profession will have burnout more often because they've got this drive Mm -hmm. It's this need to help this need to be there. And it just kind of you're hustling and then soon you neglect everything about you. you just feel irritable about things. You just find that you have no compassion. And suddenly it's just like, I just, I just don't want to do anything. Don't, don't make me do anything. 
but yet we still get up every day. We still hustle through and we just feel dead and dead and dead inside. Yeah. And I feel like for me, I mean, I feel fortunate that the coach we both worked with together really helped us not get to that burnout, right. By like not thinking about work all the time and not, you know, promoting that we work 80 hours a week. Right? And yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, okay. So what about sleep? How do you see burnout as affecting sleep? So I look at it from the idea that a lot of times we are burnout. We are, like I said, we're hustling all the time and we're in this go, go, go. So I want you to imagine that your brain never shuts off and it's saying things like we've got so much to do. We're never going to get it done. Like it's just impossible to, to do. And at the same time, there's this pressure to succeed, this pressure to keep going. And so what are you going to sacrifice? You're not going to sacrifice your, well, you'll sacrifice your exercise. You'll sacrifice your time with your family. But honestly, the first thing that we start sacrificing is our sleep. It's like, if I can just get things done faster or earlier. And what, what I tend to notice with the people I work with is that they tend to get up earlier. They're like Mm -hmm. this whole, I'm going to be honest, this whole like morning hour, like get up early thing works for some people, but if you're already heading to burnout, the idea of getting up earlier is actually really, really detrimental. And we're not moving with our own sleep um, rhythms, which I know Martha, that's what you talk a lot about is our own rhythms. And so when you start to say, Nope, I'm going to get up earlier. I'm going to start getting up at three, four in the morning, but I'm not going to bed till midnight. Um, that is a surefire way that you are going to be heading into burnout even quicker as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I can see that there's that burning the candle of both ends, like Mm -hmm. many entrepreneurs do. And, you know, I've worked with quite a few clients who like, that is what actually triggered their insomnia. So they weren't, you know, they were choosing not to sleep at first and working 80 hour weeks and all the things. And then it eventually led to this not being able to sleep. So yeah. And, you know, a lot of what I talk about as my audience already knows, but is, you know, also that stress means your body's constantly making cortisol. And, and so then when that's happening, like when we're go, go, go all day long, it's really hard to relax at bedtime. Like we can't just go, go, go until midnight and then fall asleep until four and then wake up and go, go, go again. Like, yeah. So our bodies can get stuck in that fight or flight. And then that affects us physically. It causes imbalances in the body that then also lead to sleep issues or other health issues. And so, yeah. So it is this, like today we're talking about this mental stress that definitely affects sleep, but also because it affects the body over time. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a vicious cycle either way you look at it. Right. Yeah, exactly. So how do we prevent this? Or if we are burnt out, how do we get out of this? So those are actually two different things to look at is the prevention and then the recovery of burnout. I wish that I could say, oh, it's a real simple switch, but the studies have shown that burnout, like recovery is a three to five year process. So this isn't something that we can just, again, flip it and it's all better. But that sounds, (laughs) that sounds awful. I know everybody's like, oh. But there are things that we can do that actually help you to then know what to look for. And so we're going to, we'll talk about that, like the preventing of it. And so even if you're in that burnout stage, these things will help to shorten that amount of time. They will also help to kind of bring you out of it because nobody's, let's be honest, none of us can sit basically and say five years go by now I'm all better. We really do have to kind of move along. So one of the first things you want to start looking at is when it does come to preventing burnout what, how am I spending my time? What does my time look like? Am I spending it with, um, a whole bunch of excess things? Am I starting to cut out personal care things like the working out? Am I cutting out time with my family? Am I starting to like work 80, 90 hours a week? Those are the first things you look at. And then you have to start making some adjustments. It's, it is not a good idea to be working 90 hours a week, but a lot of times we feel like we have to. So if that's the case, this is where I come in, where we look at like, what is actually required of you? How do we find balance in that? And even if your job, I I have a client that is traveling all the time. She travels, um, across the country, across the world actually. And so she really does 
she really does work like those insane long hours. So we look at what can she do when she's in her destinations? How does she make sure she has her exercise in? How does she schedule her sleep? How does she make sure that she has lunch breaks? Those are very important. How does she make sure that she's scheduling her time so that she has time with her kids, with her husband, like, so that essentially she feels like she's not isolated and work isn't the only thing, even with those busy, busy schedules. So that's one of the first things. The other thing I want you to really, really look at when it comes to preventing burnout is how am I talking to myself? Like, what am I expecting of myself? What are my, um, my drives, my ambitions? What does that look like? My goals, are they realistic? And even if they're totally not, because let's be honest, we all set those unrealistic goals. Am I giving myself grace in that moment? And I'm able to say, it's okay. Like this is it's a really big goal and I can get there and I'm okay to fail along the way. A lot of times with burnout, we don't allow the failure. We are so hard on ourselves. We're mean, we're like, we're so vicious almost. And so our body and brain are basically like, you're not very nice to me. So I'm not gonna be very nice to you in return. So it kind of shuts down. And so you want to be able to say, how am I talking to myself? What am I doing in that moment? So those are two kind of big red flags you look at to prevent. And then from there, the next thing you just want to really look at is, am I allowing my emotions? Am I allowing myself to feel stress? Stress isn't a bad thing. So am I allowing it or am I trying to like push through it? Am I saying I'm not feeling well and I'm allowing myself to rest? Am I okay to say, I just, I just don't want this or that. And is that okay? Like, are we allowing those emotions of anger, fear, fear, sadness, happiness, or are we just trying to hurry through it? And that's a real big part of what I do with my clients is making sure that they understand those emotions that you can feel them, you can have them, and it won't stop you from being productive. It won't stop you from reaching your goals. It will, if we ignore them and just pretend that they don't exist. Yes, I love that. And all of this is what I've learned, you know, being exposed to life coaching over the past few years as well, which I just find amazing. So yeah, I think it's all these things that we don't even think about, like how we talk to ourselves and, <laughs> and the, yeah, the things that we're telling ourselves that are making a big difference. So Absolutely. yeah, I love that. And I want to just put in there for these high achievers, like studies are shown about productivity that when you lose an hour of sleep, you are way less productive th the next day. You lose like your, your thoughts, you lose track of what you're doing. So you're spend more time, like getting back to remembering what you were doing and getting back into it. So it totally affects our pro our focus and therefore our productivity. So mm -hmm. I'm always telling people like skipping one hour of sleep to be more productive or to get more done that night is just going to make you get less done the next day. So it's not really worth it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I can see how what you're saying is a process and it is going to take some time to like, if you've been doing years of working around the clock and not taking care of yourself, it's definitely going to take some time to change those habits and, and those thoughts and the way you're talking to yourself for sure. Well, and one of the other problems that I see with my clients is sometimes when it comes to like their corporate job, their, their boss is expecting them to work that amount of time. And so when they've come to this burnout and they suddenly have to set boundaries and they suddenly have to say, I can't do this. It's, it requires honestly a whole corporate conversation. And I, again, had a, a different client that she was able to take some time off of work because she hit that burnout wall where it was like, she wasn't not only unproductive, but it was almost like she couldn't drive anywhere anymore. It was debilitating anxiety about everything. And so she was able to take some time off where we could just really refocus her schedule, refocus everything. And then we even had a, a meeting with her boss to say, look, she's a very valuable employee. And he's like, absolutely. I don't want to lose her. So then we need to work out what this looks like for her moving forward. And I think that that's a real crucial part of the burnout conversation that isn't happening is it's just basically, well, just deal with it, just move on. And it's okay to be able to say, okay, you know, this isn't working anymore. I know I've performed at this level, but this is what this needs to look like. And I, I unfortunately 
like I mentioned, I had that experience where it was like, I just, you know, hit that wall. I went to my boss and I said, I need some help. I need some accommodations. And I unfortunately worked for a corporation that was not friendly in that matter. And it, it really actually hurt more for me to be able to say, I know that this is what I need and I have to go a different direction, but I can't, you know, I can't be too sad about it. That's what created my own company. That's what made me move on is because when somebody else isn't going to take care of you, you have to take care of yourself. And I think that's a very vital part of burnout as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, and you're a big part of this, like things are changing in the corporate world because there is this expectation for people to be on call 24 seven. And we can think that of having your own business too, but you know, especially when you're have a boss you're answering to. And it, you know, it's like that also in medical school and law school and, and practicing those things of where, you know, you're weak if you need sleep and, and all of that. But I, I think luckily that conversation and mindset is changing now. And so there's too much study. There are too, yeah. too many studies that say yeah. sleep is so vital and so important. And so if we're not having that conversation, then it is it, that is a crime. It's just a travesty for everything out there that we are just ignoring that situation and expecting more and more when it's not our, physically, our bodies can't do it. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, so I think that we're learning this and we, as you know, and everyone, including the corporate that they're going to keep losing people if things don't change and that costs them a lot of money. And so, you know, I think that they should have an incentive to, to really make sure that their employees are healthy and thriving and then they're going to do a much better job. So I love <laughs> it that you're helping people with this. I mean, coming from corporate and now helping people in that world, and it's going to help transform the entire industry. So I think that that's great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you want to add? So I didn't mention this, but I think it's also important. A lot of times we, because we keep pushing and we keep going after everything when it comes to burnout, nobody's going to, nobody's actually going to stop a lot of times because we don't think we can. And so one of the things I just really want to put out there is if you're struggling with any of this, you're struggling and you're not sure, is it stress, overwhelm? Is it anxiety, depression? Like if is it any of those things, talk to someone, talk to a friend and say, Hey, this is what I'm feeling. Um, talk to a therapist, talk to a coach, talk to somebody to say, this is what's going on rather than feeling like you have to hold it all in and you just have to push through it. I find so many of my clients, they almost feel like it's, it's a sign of weakness when they finally ask for help. And it's not, it's actually such a sign of strength to go and get the help that you need so that you can be productive, effective, and move forward in the life that you want. So by all means, talk to somebody. It's the most important thing you can do on your journey of avoiding burnout and recovering from it. Yes. And hire Julie. She's, she's one of the life coaches I always recommend to people who are looking for more, um, you know, intensive of this, of this mindset and burnout piece. So tell everyone where they can find you. So you can find me at Julie lamb coaching. That's Julie lamb coaching.com. My Instagram handle is that Facebook, LinkedIn. It's not <laughs> Julie lamb coaching is kind of where you find me. Awesome. Um, I think it's, and also I have a podcast called what the hell is my brain doing, where I go into a lot of these things as well and talk about like the little nuances of your brain that come to burnout. Yeah. It's so fascinating too. So I highly recommend her podcast as well. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. I appreciate it. And we'll put all these links in the show notes so people can find you. Thank you.